While the Biden administration is doing everything possible to counter Russia's invasion of Ukraine while avoiding a direct military confrontation that could spiral out of control, Republicans and right-wing pundits are pitching increasingly reckless ideas that would drastically escalate the conflict. Oh, and Donald Trump is blaming it on windmills. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Russia's brutal and illegal invasion of Ukraine set off a dire humanitarian crisis and united virtually the entire world in opposition. Even fast food chains are pulling their business from Russia. Several more big name companies announced they're ending at least part of their operations in Russia. McDonald's, Starbucks, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, KFC, Pizza Hut and Unilever are scaling back or ending their sales of their product in Russia. Even Pizza Hut. Putin tried to out pizza the hut, but he learned the hard way. In Russia, hut out pizzas you. <laughs> and KFC too. KFC too. what a bummer for the Russian Colonel Sanders, or as he's known in Russia, Supreme General Dmitry Petrov <laughs> of the Russian Imperial Chicken Guard. So Russia lost its pizza hut and KFCs, and as a form of further punishment, a Sabaros in Red Square just opened. There are no good outcomes for anyone here, including Russia. The regime is under intense sanctions, or in the case of the Sabaros, sanctions, and facing <laughs> nearly universal global condemnation. And on top of that, they're encountering brave resistance from the Ukrainian people and their president, Volodymyr Zelensky, who said in a new interview this week that this war can only end with dialogue. Can you make a compromise with Putin? Can you trust Putin? Trust? Oh, no, I trust only my family. How can you make a deal with somebody you don't trust, then? We have to. We have to, because to stop this war, how to stop this war? Only dialogue. What would be your, your message to President Vladimir Putin right now? Right now? Right now, stop the war, begin to speak. That's it. And what if he doesn't? I think he will. I think he will. I think he sees that we are strong. He will. That's really incredible. Even a guy who is being hunted by one of the world's most barbaric autocrats still believes in the power of dialogue. And let's not forget, this guy who is now courageously leading his people in defense of their homeland was once Ukraine's top comedian, which makes it even more incredible because the comedians I know do not believe in dialogue. <laughs> they believe in monologue. Every conversation between my comedian friends is just two people performing at each other. <laughs> and you know when one of them says something funny because the other one says, that's funny. <laughs> also, can we go back to this? Can you trust Putin? Trust? Oh, no, I trust only my family. I mean, that's even more impressive to me because I don't trust my family even a little bit. <laughs> Especially my kids. A Couple of nights ago, true story, our oldest threw up. So we brought him in bed with us and we got him a bowl in case it happened again. 20 minutes later, the three-year-old starts screaming that he's also gonna puke. And I said, I think you're faking it and I think you just wanna get in bed with us too. And he said, no. I'm really, really sick. So we got in bed, he got his own bowl, and tell me, based on this photo, if you think he was telling the truth. <laughs> so while I know it can't be easy to talk to Putin, at least you don't have to negotiate with Axel at 3 a.m. <laughs> the point is, if even Zelensky still believes in the power of dialogue, then the rest of us should too, because he's right. That's the only way this horrific conflict can end. Reckless escalation will only make things worse, which is why irresponsible GOP politicians and pundits need to stop floating crazy ideas that would only heighten tension between nuclear powers. Like, for example, when we told you earlier this week that Donald Trump had come up with an insane idea to bomb Russia, but pretend it was China that did it. According to CBS, Trump says we should, quote, put the Chinese flag on some F-22 fighter jets and, quote, bomb the out of Russia. Now, Trump reportedly made the suggestion to top GOP donors at a retreat in New Orleans this weekend. The crowd apparently laughed when he said this, so let's just assume it was a joke. No, let's not assume that. I mean, a lot of us assume that he was joking when he said he was gonna run for president because, you know, he was a famously broke game show idiot. But Trump is always joking until he's not. He's like a husband pitching a three-way to his wife and her best friend. <laughs> I mean, that would be so funny, the three of us, right? Would it be funny? Should we do it, though, as a joke? <laughs> That's how Trump gauged his reaction, by pretending he's not serious. Remember when he was supposedly joking in 2016 that Russia should hack Hillary's emails, and then they actually did it? 
or when he looked one of his science advisors dead in the eye and suggested we should inject people with disinfection to cure coronavirus and then later claimed he was joking? If that was a joke, then why did her face look like that? <laughs> she looks like she just heard they opened a Sabaro in D.C. <laughs> That's what Trump does. He floats crazy <laughs> and sees how far he can take it. If one idea gets rejected, he just tries another one. All right, how about this? Instead of putting the Chinese flag on the jets, we give him a fake nose and a mustache. <laughs> or uh, uh, we stack three jets on top of each other in a trench coat and pretend they're a businessman. <laughs> Out of town businessman, it could work. Would that work? Let's remember, no one seriously thought Trump would stage a coup either, and then he ended up sicking an angry mob of insurrectionists and werewolves on the Capitol. <laughs> or how about Trump's obsession with windmills? You might think that's all a big joke too, but it's not. He's still obsessed with them. In fact, this week, Trump was asked about the Russian invasion and used it as a jumping off point to start ranting incoherently once again about how much he hates windmills. What do you see happening next then? Because it seems like the tensions are high. What, how does this all end? Is this gonna be like a long-term thing? How do you see it unfolding? Well, I, and I said this a long time ago, if this happens, uh, we are uh, playing right into their hands, the green energy, the windmills, they don't work. They're too expensive. They kill all the birds, they ruin your landscapes, and yet the environmentalists <laughs> love the windmills. And I've been preaching this for years, the windmills, and I had them way down but the windmills are the most expensive energy you can have. Uh, and they don't work. And by the way, they last a period of 10 years. And by the time they start rusting and rotting all over the place, nobody ever takes them down. They just go onto the next piece of prairie or land and destroy that. First of all, I feel like you should like windmills because you both just go in circles all the time and make a giant <laughs> sucking sound. I mean, seriously, how does he get from Russia's invasion of Ukraine to windmills in one sentence? Trump's favorite game is one degree of windmills. Give me any topic and I'll tie it to windmills in one move. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> inflation. And with inflation, people are paying twice, maybe three times what they paid for a windmill last year. I'm really good at it. I'm really good at one degree of windmills. This is the leader of the Republican Party. He's their most likely nominee in 2024, and whether he runs or not, he still wields tremendous power over the party. Republicans are all desperate to lavish praise on him and do whatever he orders them to do, even his supposed critics, like his former Attorney General Bill Barr, who has a new sham book out supposedly criticizing Trump's behavior, and who said on Fox News this week, Trump is unhinged. What do you think was the most alarming or unsettling moment for you in the administration? It was certainly unsettling when I went in to talk to the president about the election and, uh, uh, you know, he was livid and shaking and, you know, showed a lot of uh, temper uh, and yelling. Um, that was a little unsettling. But the other thing that was actually unsettling is later when I went in to actually give him my letter of resignation. Uh, he started talking about how he had actually won the election and how the machines were rigged and that he was actually going to be there for another term and he was very confident of that. And I, I just felt this showed a detachment from reality that was stunning to me. That's what's in your book? You know he didn't just say that to you, right? He said it to all of us all the time. Wait, are we all supposed to be writing books? Am I going to... Walk into Barnes & Noble and see a tell-all from my neighbor, Bob? <laughs> and also, you were stunned. Really? That's the moment it finally sucked in for you that maybe this guy was a little off right at the end? You're like a person who stopped watching Game of Thrones because it was too violent in the second to last episode. I don't know. When the hound was fighting the mountain, I just thought, that's enough for me. But just to illustrate the point that Trump is still very much the leader of the GOP, even Barr, who is now trying to cash in with bull tell all said in an interview this week that despite Trump's supposedly stunning detachment from reality, he'd still vote for Trump over a Democrat in 2024. If he is the nominee and you have your choice is Donald Trump or whoever's running on the Democratic side, would you vote for him? Uh, because I believe that the, the greatest threat to the country is the progressive agenda being pushed by the Democratic Party, it's inconceivable to me that I wouldn't vote for the Republican nominee. So even if he lied about the election and threatened democracy, as you write in your book. Well, it's, well, it's Better hard, than a Democrat. It's hard to project what the facts are going to turn out to be three years hence, but as of now, it's hard for me to conceive that I wouldn't vote for the Republican nominee. So then why should we care about anything you have to say? Trump's detached from reality, but you'd still support him for president? You're like a cop who gets a fax from the Zodiac Killer and says, this guy's a sicko, but he'd be a great math teacher.
Interviewing this charlatan is such a waste of airtime. Don't help him plug his dumb book. There are any number of other books that deserve more attention. If I had a book, that'd be a better use of your time. Oh, wait, I do. I have a brand new children's book called I'm Not Scared, You're Scared. My son, Axel, said it was great, and it's not like he ever lies. <laughs> On the one hand, Biden is handling this situation very much how you'd hope and expect soberly and with restraint. On the other hand, Trump and his supporters are just randomly pitching crazy ideas for escalating the conflict. Like Fox host Jesse Waters, who had a retired lieutenant general on his show, and started just spitballing reckless ideas for how other countries could get involved militarily. See if you think this is a, a proper idea. What if we started distracting the Russians um, and made them a little nervous? What if we had the Japanese stir up a little trouble on their eastern flank? What if we sent some naval assets into the Black Sea, just say, hey, you know, we're protecting Turkey, our NATO ally. What if, we, you know, we, we scrambled a few jets in the Baltics or something, yeah. something to make the Russians maybe think twice and, and, and take their eye off the ball a little bit. Do you think you're in a pitch meeting for the new Steven Seagal movie? <laughs> Tell me what you have, Jesse. Eastern flanks, scrambled jets, naval assets, stirred up trouble. That's very good, Jesse. The only problem is the budget for this film is only $45. <laughs> In what possible world does anyone think the best path forward with Vladimir Putin is to just <laughs> around with him? If you have a rabid raccoon in the corner of your garage, you call animal control, but I bet you could get someone on Fox News to say, no, what you want to do is set off a bunch of firecrackers to freak it out. <laughs> and then when it's all confused, you run and dress like a giant squirrel and say, come with me if you want to live. And then when it runs out, surprise, you've got a second rabid raccoon you bought on the black market, and now they have to fight. Bang, boom, problem solved. <laughs> Russia's invasion of Ukraine is an unfathomable tragedy that has resulted in a dire humanitarian crisis. And what we need to do right now to help the Ukrainian people is find a path forward toward dialogue and de-escalation to end the conflict as quickly as possible. What we don't need are reckless ideas that would escalate the conflict from people who have no idea what they're talking about, like former presidents whose brains are... Rusting and rotting. This has been a closer look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over 2 million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help. Now more than ever, if you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.